what is the mark of the beast and is it here right now? All right, uh, just a real quick study, just going through the book of Revelation to explain what the mark of the beast is, what it means to take the mark to, you know, to get God's wrath and whatever. Um, I'm going to show you what the Bible teaches on this. We'll start out in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 through 18. We read here the King James Bible. This is what you need to have. Ironically, the oldest English Bible in common use. There were ones that predated it, but uh, the oldest one in common use, and yet it gets a prophecy right about implantable microchips. Don't mess with the ESV or the NIV or the NASV or any of the other ones. Very rather interesting here. Um, Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Interesting. A lot of, for many, many years, many commentators said that the King James Bible translators had gotten it wrong because it can't, you can't possibly have a mark that would be in the right hand that would control buying and selling. Yet today we have implantable microchips that are doing just that. Hmm. You say, well, then the mark of the beast is here. No, let's keep reading. Verse 17, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. All right, the number of his name. Rather interesting here. Go to verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So six, six, six. And it's ironic because references to the mark of the beast in the King James Bible in the book of Revelation, there are six references. So kind of an interesting thing there. Now let's go to the next one here. The second reference to the mark of the beast is found in Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 12. I'm going to read the verses and we'll go back through and pick out some very important points here. Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Okay, so let's go back through this now. Verse 9, notice a couple things. The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man, okay, there is no eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble, unless you're one of the 144,000 sealed Jews, okay, mentioned in Revelation chapter 7. If you're one of those, then you are sealed, all right? Right now, Christians are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. But I thought we were redeemed. Well, we're redeemed in the sense of our sins were paid for at the cross, but the day of redemption that's spoken of in Ephesians chapter 1, it's talking about when the Lord says, come up hither and catches up his bride. Okay? That's the redemption of the purchased possession. A lot of posties don't get that. They don't understand. And then they try to say, well, there's eternal security the whole way through. Uh, then this would be a lie right here then. See, they make God a liar. It's a problem. All right, uh, there is no eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble. If you take the, bar, the, the mark of the beast and worship uh, the beast in his image, if you take the mark, worship the beast in his image, get it right yet, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, if you do that, it, the Bible says if any man does this. Okay, and it doesn't say if any lost man. There'd be no point in writing that. Okay, if any lost man. Well, obviously. All right, if you're lost, well, you're lost. It's talking about if any man does these things. But notice the three. Okay? If any man worship the beast, get my thumb on this here. If any man worship the beast and his image and, who's, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. Three things. Hmm. Rather interesting because there's a unholy trinity on the earth at, and there is no such thing as a holy trinity either, by the way. Um, there's an unholy trinity on the earth. The beast, known as the Antichrist, the false prophet, mentioned in Revelation 13, and the dragon. Hmm. All these people talking about worshiping the Trinity, that's who they're talking about. They will one day really truly be worshiping the Trinity. Because Jesus Christ, the Father and the Holy Ghost, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they're never called the Trinity in the King James Bible. 
and there's a whole bunch of other stuff on that, but we'll continue. Verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. If any man takes that mark, worships the beast and his image, there's no eternal security. Again, you got to get that. And they get God's wrath. Verse 11, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Again, the three there. Worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Three things that you have to do. And I say that because there are people that are trying to teach that the mark of the beast is here today, and they try to spiritualize it whenever else. The beast isn't here. Unless you try to spiritualize that, too. Then you have all kinds of other problems. But uh, it's not here yet. So if you've taken a chip in your skin, you're not damned yet. All right? But again, notice there, the wrath of God comes in verse 10. In verse 11, it says, The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. And uh, that means eternal torment in hell. One of the strongest proof texts that hell is eternal, number one. And number two, it's burning. It's a terrible, terrible place. You don't want to be there. You don't want to go through that. All right? Very important to understand that. Okay? Uh, let's go to the next one here. Verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Two different things. Uh, no Christian is told in any of the Pauline epistles to keep the commandments. All right? Um, so it's faith and works in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why you read in Matthew chapter 24 about... Uh, pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Revelation, or Romans chapter 13, verse 9, Paul gives some of the commandments that we're supposed to follow and keep. He never mentions keeping the Sabbath day. So you've got to rightly divide the word of truth, you see. Matthew chapter 24 also says, let them which be in Judea. Jews, in other words. Okay? Um, not to mention the fact that they're preaching the gospel of the kingdom. No such verse in any of the Pauline epistles saying, preach the gospel of the kingdom. All right, and they endure to the end to be saved. So, you got to get your scripture straight. Revelation chapter 15, we'll see the third reference to the mark of the beast here. Revelation 15, verse 1, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark, and over the number of his name. Okay, that's, well, there'll be three there. Uh, they got the victory over the beast, and over his image, his mark, over the number of his name. Okay, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Okay, next one, Revelation chapter 16, verse 1 through 2. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. All right? Again, you're going to see that. And of course, if you're worshipping the image of the beast, you're also worshipping the beast. So that particular reference there doesn't say worship the beast and his image. But you can kind of deduce that. If you're worshipping the image, you're obviously worshipping the beast. All right, now let's go to Revelation 19. And this is very important because a lot of people are messing with this thing of the mark of the beast. And they're, they're saying it's a mental decision or it's a this or it's a that. It is a, it is a physical mark. I believe an implantable microchip, which I'll talk about that here in a minute. A couple minutes, actually. Um, it is something physical and it's, it's, you know, it controls buying and selling in the future. And implantable microchips would be absolute nightmare, you know, for financial types of transactions, which I'll, again, I'll talk about that. Revelation 19, verse 19 through 21 says, And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, and them that wrought miracles before him, or that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, 
and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Talking about Jesus Christ, if you read the context. Again, we're not reading the context of these chapters, just touching on the mark of the beast. But uh, the end, the final conclusion of the beast, the Antichrist, is he gets cast into the lake of fire and the false prophet with him. And the dragon gets taken in Revelation chapter 20 down uh, verse 1 through 3, essentially there. But look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Here's the final reference to the mark of the beast. And this is where it gets very interesting. Uh, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had, had, had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Huh. It's very interesting there, because here is a reference where it actually says upon the forehead. Uh, now, I do believe the King James Bible as it stands, when it says that that mark is in the right hand or in the forehead. I do believe that. I believe it's an implantable microchip. Absolutely. But in this reference here, it says upon. Now, here's my theory on this. And I've kind of said about this before, but uh, I believe 100% that the religion of the Antichrist is going to be Roman Catholicism. I mean, he sits on a throne. Uh, what religious leader sits on a throne right now? Uh, that would be the Pope, okay? Um, he sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Uh, the, the Pope, what's one of his titles? Holy Father. That's God the Father's title. You can't take that title as a man, but the Pope does. He is, calls himself basically God on earth. And that's what Catholics think of him. Uh, you look at a lot of the other things that the Antichrist is going to be doing, and um, it's Catholicism. I firmly believe that. Mystery Babylon. She's the woman that rides the beast. She controls the beast. And you look at Revelation 17 where it talks about Mystery Babylon. Her collars are purple and scarlet. What religion has cardinals in red, bishops in purple? Roman Catholicism. Again, it's, it's, just, it's right there in front of your face. But here's the thing. I believe that the mark of the beast is in the right hand or in the forehead. Okay, Implantable microchip. RFID tag, whatever you want to call it. We'll get back to that. But when the Bible says, had received his mark upon their forehead, does it say that that mark upon the forehead is something that's permanent? Like a digital tattoo or whatever else people surmise and things. And, and I've wondered that myself sometimes. Uh, I don't really think it says it's permanent. Um, what if that mark upon the forehead is actually being already carried out right now? You say, huh? I thought you said the mark of the beast isn't here yet. Well, it's not, because the beast isn't here yet. But stay with me. What if that mark upon the forehead is actually just a reference to Ash Wednesday? You already have Catholics going in, and they're already putting a mark upon the forehead. If you see them walking around the store, they got this black ash there on their forehead. Hmm. You see, if you're a faithful Roman Catholic, and I believe the religion of the Antichrist is actually going to be pre-Vatican II Roman Catholicism that puts heretics to death instead of trying to be ecumenical and whatever else with them. But you take this, this pre-Vatican II Roman Catholicism, and they're saying, come in, kneel, and you kneel down, and they say, you know, whatever they put, they'll even do the oil upon the forehead, you know, the sign of the cross on the forehead or the whatever. They're putting marks upon people's forehead all the time. What if the reference in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4 is actually just to what Catholicism has been doing for, what, a thousand, two thousand, not two thousand years, but well over a thousand years? I'm not really sure when Ash Wednesday came in. I haven't done the study on that, you know, the exact date when they started to, to do that. It wasn't being done in the New Testament. They never put an ash, a little ash spot on their forehead. Paul coming in and sticking somebody with ash on their forehead. It's not there. Um, and even Catholics would admit, yeah, it's you know it's a tradition that came after the Bible was completed. Certainly they would say that. Um, so my theory is, I believe that the mark of the beast is going to be an implantable microchip of some kind um, that is in the right hand or in the forehead. And you become a Catholic, and so they put the mark upon the forehead. It's not a permanent mark, it's just Ash Wednesday or the sign of the cross or whatever else that they do with oil or whatever. You're getting marks upon the forehead as a Roman Catholic. You're already being prepared and acclimated to be part of the Antichrist religion. 
where you're worshiping a holy trinity on the earth, the blessed trinity. Hmm. Very interesting. But uh, a couple things you want to watch out for. Um, developments in Bible prophecy. Uh, this stuff proves the scriptures. Uh, we're given a more sure word of prophecy, the Bible says. If this book, you say, how can you prove that this book is from God? Well, very simple. Uh, if an eternal being wrote a book, then it shouldn't be limited to our time. In other words, he can write about the past. He can write about the present. It should be applicable to the present. And it should also be able to accurately tell what's going to happen in the future. All right? And the Bible does. Absolutely. Unless you have a prejudice and you, and you hate it because you love sin. Uh, then you can try to find errors in it and all kinds of stuff. Um, but four different things, technologies that you should look out for. Okay, number one, implantable microchips. RFID tags, radio frequency identification devices is what RFID stands for. Um, it's so common today, you know, tags on your stuff that you go and you get, you know, shopping and whatever else. They got these little tags on them and things, RFID chips. Um, cell phones, you're walking around with something that can track and they can track and trace wherever you go. Even listen in on you and things like that. I don't know why people use cell phones. I hate them. Uh, don't have a cell phone. Don't intend to get one. But uh, there's, a, there's a lot of that, these RFID tags. And I saw that there's a big thing in Sweden. I reported on this, you know, a long time ago where a lot of people, you know, are getting these, you know, implanted microchips in their hand. And it's all its latest trendy thing and whatever else. And there, a lot of businesses are starting to chip their employees. And they say, well, it's not required. It's not mandatory yet, uh, but it will be. They will force it eventually. And um, so you see this thing developing. And, of course, they're saying you can make uh, transactions and it's so much handier. And, and, of course, with the economy collapsing, and it will, they'll, they'll collapse it to get rid of cash. And then it's going to be, well, if we just had implantable microchips, then you would never have to carry a wallet. We could have it secure. We could this. We, you buy all your stuff digitally anyways. And, you know, and you go to the grocery store and they got the self-checkout lines. And it's, it's all based on RFID tag type technology. And, of course, you know, some of it will go in with, you know, biometric scanning as well. But uh, digital tattoos. I'm not so much sold on that whole thing because, you know, I don't believe the mark is going to be a pun in terms of the actual thing of buying and selling. I think it's just going to be, you know, and I could be wrong. I'm not going to be dogmatic about it. It could be that it will be a digital tattoo upon the forehead um, that you'll be able to look at somebody from far away and say, oh, you know, you're one of the brethren, you know, or something, brotherhood or whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't know. But digital tattoos, maybe. But it's problematic, again, because it can fall off. You see, you could, you know... Uh, or if it gets tattooed on there or whatever else, you could, you know, something could obscure it or whatever. You know, you go to a grocery store or whatever, and they're trying to scan things, these barcodes or even QR codes. Half the time it's not working. Or you go to the post office and they're trying to scan your package or whatever else. Um, so I don't know about some of that stuff. Uh, uh, you know, again, how close are we to this? I still, I think that there's still a few years to go yet before they really have things perfected to the point where they could Im implement this Mark of the Beast technology. Another big part of it is the 5G wireless grid um, millimeter wave technology where they're able to give us ultra high speed internet, which, you know, I think it's fast enough right now, but uh, whatever. Um, and it's, it's not really about faster internet. It's about being able to track and control people. And um, if you wonder why there's so many animal deaths and plants dying and all kinds of other stuff, it's wireless. Uh, these millimeter waves are ultra deadly toxic. Um, I used to live near a power line, high voltage power lines, and there were no plants that would grow in underneath those towers. And those towers, I did a video actually showing right underneath the tower, I stood underneath it with a gauze meter and I stood there. The tower puts off less electronic radiation than a cell phone, than an iPhone does, in other words. And yet you carry the iPhone around your pocket, put it up to your head, even though the directions say don't put it right on your, on your you know, face, on your skin. Keep it a couple inches away, you know, like that far away or whatever. I mean, it's crazy. It's, it's absolutely nuts. But the 5G wireless thing is going to take it to a whole new level, and they're going to push it through because it is part of the Mark of the Beast system. I believe people will be implanted so that they can be tracked and traced and wherever they go and 
whatever, to keep them safe, of course, just like your pets are already microchipped. Internet 2. Again, I believe at some point in time, I have no clear uh, prophetic insight in this, to be very honest. I, I do believe it will come in, but when will it come in? I don't know. Um, could it come in before the catching up of the body of Christ? Yes. Um, but in other ways, I look at it and I think it would make more sense, actually, to wait until the rapture happens, the catching up happens, and then... You know, they could say, oh, look, this, these Christian terrorists, we got to take down the web, the internet, so that we can get rid of all this horrible stuff so this doesn't happen again, you know, because they, you know, the children are all going to leave as well. So it's going to be a massive tragedy all over the world. The worst event ever in history. The, the, I mean, it's going to affect everybody. Nobody's going to be um, not affected by it in some way. And so at that point, they could crash the internet, bring it back as internet too. Or it could happen before then. There could be economic collapse. There could be war. I mean, Christians have gone through war in the past, brethren. Uh, Christians have been through some pretty bad stuff. Um, so what could happen? I don't know. Again, I really don't know what to say uh, when this Internet 2 thing could happen. But I believe that the Mark of the Beast system is going to be uh, a religious, political system of implanted microchips in people whereby you can be controlled and tracked and traced. You'll be connected basically to the internet um, through 5G wireless. Uh, there could be other things involved with digital tattoos or whatever else. I don't know, but it's going to be a nightmare. You say, well, I'm not looking forward to that, but it's going to be rough to go through. Well, you don't have to go through it. Uh, the Bible teaches that the body of Christ is going to be leaving before the Antichrist is revealed. And I've done so many studies on that. Um, you know, I just can't even get into all of it. It's just, you know, if, if you're a postie, you have no excuse, okay? Um, if you're a hardcore militant postie after hearing the truth, I'm going to tell you right now, you're lost. Okay, that's why, and you're actually right, you are going into the tribulation, what you would call the tribulation. It's actually called the time of Jacob's trouble. Another issue. But, uh, you know, if you don't believe in the pre-trib rapture, to use the common term, um, you're either lost or you're very ignorant. Uh, the scriptures plainly, plainly teach that the body of Christ is in heaven before the Antichrist is even unleashed. Uh, in fact, we're the ones that are hindering him uh, from even showing up. The spirit of Antichrist is here, but the Antichrist can't show up until the body of Christ is gone. Um, again, right now a Christian is sealed until the day of redemption. The time of Jacob's trouble, any man takes the mark of the beast, he gets God's wrath. And the posties can never answer that. They can't. Unless they they believe that you can lose your salvation now. Because then they'd say, well, yeah, you can lose it now. You can lose it in the future. It's not a problem for them. But if you're a Bible-believing Christian, you know that you can't lose your salvation. It's not yours to lose. Your salvation is based on what Jesus Christ did. So, it's a very important thing to understand there. And, uh, you know, I would say if, you've, if you're out there and you've taken some kind of a microchip, um, and you're watching this video, uh, you, haven't, you haven't taken the mark of the beast yet. You're not damned to hell yet. Uh, I would get the thing removed if you can, number one. Um, secondly, I would just simply say, uh, fall down on your knees and pray to God for mercy and just say, I did a really stupid thing here, God. Um, please save me. Cry out to the Lord for mercy and uh, get saved. You know, You need to be saved before the Antichrist shows up. Okay, and if you are born again, if Lord sa excuse me, if Lord saves you, you'll be leaving before the Antichrist shows up. So you won't have to worry about the mark of the beast at that point in time. But uh, if the catching up happens and you're watching this video afterwards, if it's still around, around or available or whatever else, um, you're going to have to disobey the government and the church government and the, the papal bulls and whatever else that come out. Um, you're going to have to just, just totally disregard all that stuff. And you're going to have to get out to a place like this and run and run and run. And more than likely, they'll catch you eventually. And then you're going to be given the chance to recant of your beliefs, just like the Catholics have done for, you know, 1,700 years, essentially. And uh, I'm just giving an approximate number there. But uh, you're going to be given the chance to recant. And if you don't, they're going to cut your head off. And you better go with that option. 
Because if you take that mark and you worship the beast in his image, remember it's three things. If you do that, um, and it's not going to be that, oh, you can take the chip, but you don't have to worship the beast in his image. It'll all be one and the same type of a thing. Okay. Um, if you do it, you're going to get God's wrath and you have no chance at all of saying, hey, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that or whatever. Or like some of these idiots teach that you can actually cut your hand off or whatever else to get rid of the mark of the beast. That's stupid. All right. Because the mark of the beast is, you know, getting God's wrath as a result of it is three different things. Okay. Worshiping the beast and his image and taking the mark. Those three things. So if you cut your you cut your hand off or whatever else, you still have the two things there of worshiping the beast and his image that you have to deal with. And that's still going to send you to hell. You know, and you can't pull a fast one on the Lord Jesus Christ that, uh, you know, well, I had to buy some food. So I just went down quick and I got the mark and then I cut my hand off afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous and i believe too by the way i believe that people that take that mark and worship the beast in his image i believe that they're going to change and they're not going to be regular people anymore and that's why they can't get saved so uh, just a very important thing because i see so much disinformation out there on the mark of the beast and people are twisting it and, and messing it up saying it's it's here today it's not here today the technology i think it's it could be used but it's not really implemented yet. You know, I st think that they still have to get the 5G thing in. And I, I think that they have to perfect these RFID tags a little bit more and get more people acclimated to the whole thing and, you know, bring down cash. And uh, gold and silver, of course, are a joke as well. But, uh, you know, there is no mark of the beast today because the beast hasn't showed up. So, don't let anybody deceive you into saying, well, you probably took the mark because you've done whatever financial things or whatever. Okay. Um, and if you want to get away from this nightmare world that's coming, then I would recommend that you get saved. Um, drop everything. Just, I don't care about my job. I don't care about my family, my relationships, whatever. I want to be saved and call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Watch our salvation message. It'll take you through the scriptures, show you how you can be born again. So you don't have to go into that horrible time that's coming and uh, worry about this Mark of the Beast thing. So I do pray that you take these things to heart. You think about them, pray about them, and um, we'll see you in the next video.